Good morning, good evening. Uh, welcome to today's semi-webinar sponsored by Benek, Enhancing Yield by Minimizing Contamination. I am Leith Artemimi, President of Semi-Europe, and today I have the pleasure to moderate this webinar. I would like to first take the opportunity to briefly introduce you to SEMI. SEMI is the Global Industry Association serving the product design and manufacturing supply chain for the electronics industry. SEMI Strategic Association partners define communities within SEMI focus on specific technologies. The Electronic System Design Alliance, uh, the Fab Owners Association and the Memory Sensors Industry Group enable technology, mindshare, people and products to tackle the big challenges of our time. As the only truly global representative of the electronics manufacturing supply chain, SEMI can bring a unique vision of the future to the world and the digital economy. SEMI connects more than 2,400 members worldwide and 1.3 million professionals to advance the technology and business of electronics design manufacturing. Our members are responsible for the innovations in materials, design, equipment, software, devices, and services that enable smarter, faster, more powerful, and more affordable electronic products. Before I start, I'd like to thank Benek uh, very much uh, for being our gold sponsor and exhibitor at our upcoming virtual event. Uh, it's our flagship of this year, Technology Unites Global Summit. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Here, I would like to introduce this uh, unique summit, uh, which on top of the virtual exhibition offers eight different uh, forms, highlighting smart trends in mobility, advanced packaging, medtech, fab management, manufacturing, MEMS and sensors, advocacy, as well as diversity and inclusion. I would like you to, to draw to your attention the executive forum, which is our jewel of this event, where global industry executive from all seven semi-regions uh, will gather online uh, uh, for keynotes on the power of technology to unite the world and insights on how micro electronics industry can shape the digital future. Thought leaders from across the electronics design and manufacturing value chain will present the latest developments, trends and innovations in key technologies and applications, powering the industry growth. We will start on February 15, so please have a look and um, at the agenda and you're more welcome to join us. Before we start, I'd like to remind you that you can submit your questions typing to uh, in the GoToWebinar control panel. We will answer all questions during the Q&A session and the recording will be also be shared with you by end of this week. And finally, it is my pleasure to introduce you our speaker, Sami Snake, Business Executive and Benek. Uh, please, Sammy, the stage is all yours. Thank you for the introduction. So today I'm going to talk about uh, how atomic layer deposition technology can be used to reduce particle contamination and metal contamination and that way improve the yield in semiconductor manufacturing processes. So. My name is uh, Sami Snek. I come from uh, Benek, Finland. I'm a business, ex business executive there in charge of semiconductor equipment parts coding business. Uh, I've been with uh, Benek 15 years now in various technical sales and management roles, uh, including uh, two years uh, in Shanghai, China. Uh, I'm a master, I have a Master of Science uh, degree in chemical engineering from Helsinki University of Technology from 2001. Then to the actual point. So uh, the, the challenge uh, we are facing here is, is, uh, is really that the semiconductor devices are getting uh, smaller and smaller, uh, as, as we all know. And uh, while, while they are getting uh, smaller in the ad more and more advanced technology nodes, uh, they are also getting more and more sensitive to particles and all kinds of contamination, including metal contamination. And uh, uh, at the same time, also, uh, the, the device uh, designs, are, are, uh, the architecture is changing uh, to more three-dimensional. So, for example, memory structures like 3D NAND uh, actually require more etching than before. So, there's a lot of etching involved, making those deep structures. 
uh, and uh, that again is is causing then uh, then issues for the equipment parts as uh, themselves as well. So the the uh, equipment parts are also a major source of of contamination in the process, and uh, uh, various different kind of coatings are being used uh, on those parts to reduce the contamination. Uh, but as we go to more and more demanding uh, technology nodes, we need uh, more and more kind of uh, uh, better coatings uh, to, to address those issues. So ALD, atomic layer deposition, can really help in this. So uh, there are a lot of uh, equipment uh, and process engineers out there struggling with, uh, with their processes uh, and, uh, and their equipment, uh, trying to reduce defects and, and uh, increase yield. And uh, ALD can, uh, can help um, many of, many of those, those uh, people finding better solutions. And this is really uh, the topic for the presentation today. Okay, so key requirements for coatings on uh, critical chamber components. First of all, the coating itself uh, should not release particles, so it cannot generate particles. Uh, it also uh, should not contain metal contaminants, so it needs to be pure. Uh, needs to have high corrosion and erosion resistance in various chemical or plasma conditions. Uh, being a highly conformal is very much an advantage, so that it can coat on complex shapes as these parts typically are, not just flat. And uh, it should have a reasonably low cost so that it, uh, uh, it is feasible to, to, to use in, in actual manufacturing. Uh, benefits uh, of using these kind of advanced coatings in general uh, really are largely related to, to higher yields and uptimes. So, so you can get higher yield through less contamination, less defects, less particles, less metal contamination, uh, also through improved process stability. So uh, uh, if the chamber component surfaces stay more uh, kind of uniform th throughout the process, uh, then the process remains more stable also. There is less drift and, and less variation, and that also helps to get higher yields and in general makes it easier to control the process. And uh, uh, also uh, good coatings can give you longer mean time between clean and also faster recovery after the preventive maintenance. So can this way give you higher uptime as well. General requirements or, or the uh, how to find the right kind of uh, coating is then to first, you have to choose the right method that you use, uh, and then choose the right material for the application, and then choose the right tool to actually make those coatings on your parts. And uh, we will follow these this each topic uh, next. So first of all, starting with the right method. So uh, all coatings have some corrosion and erosion under such harsh conditions as in the edge chamber, for example. So there is nothing that would last forever, but uh, different coatings different, definitely last longer than others. And uh, in general, porous coatings generate more particles during this, this uh, fail with the coating corrosion or erosion. So porous coatings uh, tend to release more particles when that is happening. And of course, that's unwanted thing. So high density, low porosity uh, coatings are better from, from the particle uh, uh, point of view. Uh, and uh, uh, coating material uh, itself, as mentioned, needs to be pure with kind of free of metal contamination because it will be etched anyway. So then it would be releasing those metals. And uh, uh, and uh, if coating can have high conformality, it allows to really cover all, all sides of the part, including holes and, and such uh, features, internal features. 
and uh, uh, coating needs to be applied on various different ma substrate materials so the parts can be made out of aluminum or ceramics or sometimes other metals as well so so uh, uh, coatings should be able to to be applied on on all those and uh, there's because the parts go into different kind of conditions so they will need also different types of coatings so it's good to have a method that can make various different coating materials as needed. Here in this table, we have a comparison of, of, of different coating methods uh, used in the, in the industry. So first of all, anodization is, is widely used. Uh, a positive thing is that uh, it, it is, well, it is very easy to do. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a low, kind of relatively low cost as well. Uh, it can have low metal contamination uh, and uh, high conformality, so that is that is that is good. Uh, but uh, it can only make aluminum oxide on aluminum, as that's kind of what it is, and uh, and the the film is uh, porous and thus has kind of low density. So it's not uh, it has some advantages definitely, but it's not it's far from perfect, and. Uh, the, the plasma spray coatings are also widely used, especially for yttrium oxide, but also some other materials. Uh, and uh, those also can have low metal contamination. And uh, the advantage is you can uh, uh, deposit several different materials using this technique on different substrates. But uh, limitations are that uh, it's uh, not conformal, really, so it's uh, uh, line of sight method and uh, and uh, the resulting film is porous and uh, and uh, that's that's not desired then uh, pvd is also being studied uh, more and more for these applications uh, advantage again low metal contamination uh, can do many different coating materials on many substrate materials but again line of sight so not good conformality and uh, density still is not great, so they are porous uh, film still. Uh, whereas ALD uh, ticks all the boxes basically, so it has, it has high density, basically zero porosity, uh, low metal contamination when done right, uh, and uh, very high conformality, so it can coat all, all features, uh, can do many coating materials on, on many different substrate materials. So very, very interesting uh, method for this application area. Uh, about the conformality and, and density then, so the ALD coatings are uh, really highly conformal as you see on the, on the picture on the left here. So those, uh, uh, the, the coating can really uh, follow even in this nanoscale, uh, the coating can follow all the features very precisely. So the ALD coating does the same on a millimeter and micrometer and even nanometer scale. So it is very, very conformal. And uh, about the porosity on the right hand side, uh, you can see a really a zoom in of the, of the film and, and you don't see any pores in that uh, electron microscope image. So. So that's what they are really dense, uh, pinhole free uh, and, uh, and uh, zero porosity conformal films. The purity, as, as mentioned, is, is important. There's actually a number of uh, requirements uh, that are set for these kind of coatings uh, by the OEMs and, and others. Uh, the uh, films need to have certain stoichiometry metal contamination, carbon content, uh, the porosity requirements, uh, uh, crystallinity, uh, such, such things are specified for these coatings. And uh, uh, we worked, with, we worked the, on this, this application for a number of years already and, and been uh, uh, developing our, our coatings so that we can meet these requirements. Uh, here on the, on the left side, left hand side, uh, example of uh, metal contamination kind of analysis using uh, laser ablation ICP uh, mass spectrometer and uh, for an aluminum oxide coating. Detection limit here is 0.05 ppm for all elements 
and uh, for all except one we were in this case below detection limit but we had some magnesium there which is uh, okay it's still uh, under the the or within the specification uh, so very very high purity films uh, can be made with ALD uh, one thing to notice also is that there is no cleaning needed after the ALD process so uh, the which is not the case for the uh, for the plasma spray or or PVD coatings as an example so ALD process itself is kind of a particle free process so so makes very clean makes very clean uh, end result and there is no need to to uh, have any separate cleaning process after that then about the material selection so if we know that ALD is a good method then uh, which materials we have to choose that so that the material selection is dependent on where those parts are actually being used so uh, it's possible to use ALD to coat gas lines from the inside for example or other gas line components and those are typically only exposed to corrosive chemicals but not plasma so the requirement uh, for the coating is, is quite different whereas in for example in the edge chambers or uh, chambers of uh, PECVD or ALD where you use uh, in-situ clean uh, in-situ etching basically so there there those etch conditions are very harsh and there is uh, plasma oftentimes fluorine plasma uh, present and uh, that's uh, a very different environment uh, for the part so requires different coatings uh, some of the most common materials uh, include aluminum oxide and yttrium oxide and for those we have uh, already at Benek we have full-scale batch processes available and uh, at the same time we are working on on various other uh, various other uh, materials as well so so scaling up those and uh, uh, and uh, there is a, a lot of opportunities in developing uh, different materials using ALD on the picture uh, here uh, you can see in the very very nanoscale uh, one way of, of using ALD to, to develop new materials so those white lines there are uh, less than one nanometer and the, the darker lines are around three nanometers each so so this way we can really make kind of nanolaminate uh, structures or material mixtures uh, that that may have beneficial uh, properties in this these applications Uh, here is some some results uh, from the work that we've done with uh, with one of our partners, Air Liquid, uh, related to to kind of benchmarking the ALD films uh, edge rate, which is really critical uh, uh, kind of uh, parameter for these for these coatings, as they need to tolerate the the edge conditions. So here's a uh, comparison of of, uh, of uh, silicon nitride and silicon dioxide with PECVD compared to uh, ALD aluminum oxide and ALD yttrium fluoride in this case. So we see here that the aluminum oxide obviously is also uh, much uh, has much higher edge resistance, uh, but uh, yttrium fluoride is is a kind of order of magnitude better in this case. And the conditions here are, this is an ICP etcher uh, using a, a CF4, so fluorine plasma uh, conditions. So again, the material to be selected according to, to the conditions where, it's, uh, where the part is being used. Then when you've chosen ALD and you've chosen the material then you still need to have a piece of equipment that will do that coating and that's where the Benek P800 comes in so it is the largest uh, uh, general purpose kind of batch size ALD system in the market it is really uh, also the one of the really only ones that are optimized for such thick coatings so it's it's a uh, all the time being used for micrometer scale uh, coatings in, in thickness so typical ALD 
users are using ALD films that are in the nanometer or tens of nanometers thickness range, but we are used to working in the micrometer range with our P-series systems. We've been doing that uh, for more than 30 years every day, all the time. So, so that's uh, something that we are very familiar with. So this system is very much robust and production proven, uh, can deposit various different materials on, on various different uh, types of parts. Uh, there is a separate reaction chamber inside a vacuum chamber. Uh, there is a cross section here on the right side, so you can see the, uh, the, the gray box, the reaction chamber inside. And, uh, and uh, the precursors, the precursor gases are coming from, from the precursor canisters uh, one by one. Uh, this structure, having the separate reaction chamber inside, uh, enables uh, quick reaction chamber change. So the, the parts that we use are loaded in the reaction chamber, and then the whole reaction chamber is placed into the ALD system with the parts. Uh, this makes it uh, very quick to switch the, the reaction chambers, which uh, also in case you need to clean the reaction chamber. So it's very easy for the maintenance and, and the, this way it gives you very high uptime. So really very robust in, 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 in industrial manufacturing. And uh, here we see a video or animation uh, of what is actually going on inside the machine. So the reaction chamber uh, can be now seen in, inside the, the, the system and there all the substrates, the parts to be coated are placed inside the reaction chamber. The precursor chemicals, typically two of them, are uh, placed in canisters and they are delivered from those lines uh, through the delivery lines to the reaction chamber. And the, the precursor pulses travel through the reaction chamber one by one, uh, and uh, they they are the, causing the, the film growth there, and uh, and uh, we continue this pulsing as long as uh, we want to to reach the, the desired film thickness. And if we zoom into the actual part, so here a faceplate, we see the gases flowing on top and on bottom, and uh, diffusion is, is taking the gases into the holes and every feature in this, and this way we can have the coating happening also on these uh, internal features, such as holes. Okay, so what chemically uh, happens inside the, the system during this, this process is really that the, the precursor uh, which, by the way, the precursor material can be typically is liquid or sometimes solid materials that we use, but we evaporate them in the, in the precursor source, so only the vapor is traveling from the source to the, to the reaction chamber. And uh, there are pulses of, of uh, these precursor vapors going through the reaction chamber and going out the other end. And, uh, uh, during each pulse, the, the gas, uh, the precursor gas, reacts with the surface, uh, finding any available uh, surface sites. As long as they are available, the, the kind of growth will happen. But once the surface is covered with the monolayer of, of, the, of the precursor, reacted precursor material, then the growth automatically stops. It cannot grow on itself more. So this leads to a monolayer of, of material being deposited everywhere, also inside those holes. And uh, this happens kind of automatically. And then after that, uh, we just have to make a purge, which means that we flush the system with nitrogen to get any remaining uh, precursor from the gas phase, get that out of the system. And then we introduce another chemical uh, when making oxides, it is some sort of oxidizer, usually water, so water vapor, as in, in this example here also. Uh, so water vapor is then coming in, uh, reacting again with the surface, as long as there are reactive sites to be found, then saturates, automatically stops, and uh, then it's time for another purge. 
This we have completed now one ALD cycle, so there is pulse purge, pulse purge, and uh, this this gives typically about one angstrom of of film deposition, so not much, and uh, we will need to repeat this cycle over and over many times. So to make uh, one nanometer, we need ten cycles. To make uh, one micrometer, we need ten thousand cycles. So it is important to to make this as quickly as possible. And that's why uh, having optimized flow design, kind of gas, gas flow distribution, is, is very, very important. And that's uh, also where we have a kind of plenty of expertise in, in uh, placing the parts correctly inside the chamber is very, very important part of, of making this process as fast as possible. All right, but using this method, it is possible to have uh, slowly, but anyway, to have very conformal coatings on large parts and uh, complex parts and also large batches of those complex parts. Uh, here, a practical example about the capacity. So here is a, a shower head part, basically a faceplate, diameter 460 millimeters, thickness 10 millimeters. And, uh, uh, in this batch, we have uh, 30 of those, and each part has a lot of uh, small holes, obviously, typically made out of uh, aluminum, as in this case. So here we have really batch size of 30 pieces, so we have 15 shelves, uh, each shelf carrying two of such, such parts. And, uh, and uh, here, the typical film thickness normally is around half a micron, so that's, uh, uh, it can be less, it can be more, but that's typical range. And uh, depending on various things, uh, that typically tends to take about two days to make that kind of uh, batch. So 30 parts, two days, 15 pieces per day. Uh, that's kind of the, the capacity that you could expect. Depending on parts, depending on film materials, depending on, on uh, of various other things, film thickness, batch size, many, many variables here, but that's kind of the ballpark where we are. Uh, and uh, if we think about the uniformity, what to expect? So here in the, in the graph here, uh, uh, this the kind of drawing, we show these uh, measurement locations that we've been using. So numbers and letters here are places of monitor samples. Uh, that we've had on top of the parts and uh, and around the parts on on those shelves as well, and measuring all over this. So from the top shelf, from the middle one, and and from the bottom shelf, we we uh, measure the the variation within the batch. For aluminum oxide, it's it's just one percent, one sigma value, and uh, and for yttrium oxide, we are at around six percent currently. But uh, that, is, uh, that is very much uh, kind of reasonable uh, for this kind of application. So it's where it's really most important is to have the coating everywhere and to have at least the minimum coating thickness everywhere. Uh, that's really critical. But uh, if you have a lot of uniformity variation, then that just means that you are kind of wasting uh, uh, material. You have kind of unnecessarily thick coding on somewhere, and that's, that's just going to lead to waste of time and material, but otherwise, technically, it's not really a big problem. Uh, so, we know that, that ALD is, is, is great, but uh, still have to say that it's not perfect, so nothing is. Uh, so, here we see a couple of part examples. On the left side, a good part for ALD, so this, this is uh, gray, aluminum part with uh, with those black lot of black holes so these are through holes uh, this is good part so like the face plate shown earlier this type of part is good for ALD uh, not the problem to coat uh, part B here on the right hand side is uh, has the similar feature but it also has something else in it so so here it has a lot of small holes on one side and one big hole on the other side and a large empty black cavity in the middle. And that empty cavity is really a problem uh, for ALD process because we try to do this change of precursor 
A to precursor B, we try to do that cycle as quickly as possible. And what happens is that the precursor gets stuck on this empty cavity and it takes uh, a long time to, to purge it out. So, which means that the already slow ALD process becomes really, really a lot slower. So, so uh, these kind of parts, it's, it's much easier and better to coat them as separate parts and not as a, as a kind of ready-made showerhead assembly. So there's some limitations to, to what kind of parts uh, to be used and, uh, and especially also how to place them inside the chamber. Uh, it's not all that trivial, but, but anyway, uh, ALD can do, can do uh, coatings on, on very, very complex parts when just uh, designed properly. Uh, very briefly about the company, Benek. Uh, as mentioned, we are based in Espo in Finland. We have uh, more than 40 ALD systems uh, in-house. Uh, we are an ALD equipment manufacturer and service provider with more than 30 years of industrial ALD experience. So we are the first ones really to use ALD in industrial manufacturing. Uh, currently, we are about uh, 170 employees, uh, about 35 million US dollars in revenue and, and growing. Then I'd like to summarize uh, the talk briefly. So ALD coatings are clean, dense, pinhole free and highly conformal. And they can really help you to incre increase your yield by reducing the defects and, and contamination levels. We at Benek, we offer ALD equipment for high volume manufacturing. Uh, also, we offer services and, uh, and uh, uh, we are doing that work with uh, and, and for various different types of uh, critical chamber components. And uh, then the question is that, uh, uh, are you working with, uh, with a part that could benefit from an ALD coding? If yes or maybe, I would be very, very happy to, to hear your, your thoughts, your comments, questions, and uh, discuss that further uh, as a next step. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Sammy. Um, excellent talk. Uh, and uh, I must say, very impressive and very promising ALD technology. Uh, we have time and we have some questions, so I may suggest that we start the, the Q&A session. And just a reminder, please feel free to submit your questions uh, on the control panel. Um, I would like to start with question number one. Um, Sami is, uh, can, can you coat inside of tubes, for example, gas lines with ALD technology? Yes, so uh, thank you, Len. Uh, for, the, for that question, I think I, I mentioned in the presentation already that, uh, that uh, gas lines can be coded. Uh, it, th this uh, obviously requires different types of setups, so we will need to uh, build uh, a setup where we force the, the precursor gases to flow inside the tube, uh, gas line tube that, or component that we are coding. So it is possible uh, but uh, not just by throwing uh, uh, gas line parts into a big empty chamber and and uh, and then uh, then coat them. So it requires specific uh, uh, kind of jigs so that we force the gases into the the lines. Great, thank you. Um, I have a second question here. Um, if we start using ALD, what else would be needed uh, in a facility? Okay, yes. Uh, so the ALD system uh, uh, is, is as, as mentioned, is, is based on the chemical uh, reactions. So there are, there are chemistries involved here. So you will need to have, uh, 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 depending on the process, possibly you may have some gas lines that are used in the process. Definitely you will need very high purity carrier gas, usually nitrogen. Uh, that is something that is required in the process. And then uh, after the, the ALD system, there is also uh, still some chemicals coming out in the exhaust line. 
and uh, uh, suitable scrubber systems and such are, are needed in, in that part. Other than that, uh, it doesn't require very uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, utilities or facilities around it. Uh, some cleaning is needed for the for the chamber parts that also get coated, uh, but that's typical kind of sand blasting or or bead blasting as as in any any other system. Also, so something that most people are quite familiar with. Uh, so the, really, it's the, the 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 chemistry or the chemicals are the are the kind of specialty thing. But uh, but uh, it's it's really mostly the the scrubber scrubber line, uh, as most of the chemicals come in a liquid or solid form, and and uh, come in 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 canisters uh, that can be packed somewhere else and just connected to the system. Excellent. Thanks, Sam. We have quite a list of questions, so I'm going to go through them one by one. Um, next question is, can you throw some light on the cost-related parameters uh, on the different cotton materials? Uh, so, sorry, could you repeat the question? Certainly. The uh, question is, can you throw some light on the cost-related parameters on the different cotton materials, the detailed or rough workouts on the cost part per area of the cross-section? All right. Now I think I understood. So. Yes, it is true. Different materials, uh, uh, coating materials, have very different cost structure. So, uh, let's take the aluminum oxide as an example. That has very low cost precursor materials. So that that would be probably the cheapest coating, ALD coating, to make. And also, otherwise, it it works uh, in a very kind of ideal way. Uh, and then other more uh, exotic precursor materials. Uh, can be several orders of magnitude more expensive, and then in the in that case, the precursor cost may be uh, really relevant. And uh, uh, that's that's something that uh, that uh, uh, is partly because that the precursor materials really are very expensive, and partly because uh, those are not yet used in large scale, and that's the reason why they are still expensive. Uh, so it's it's a it's a, a really a, a kind of complex uh, issue, uh, but but uh, maybe the short answer is that uh, that uh, for other materials than aluminum oxide, uh, uh, the the precursor cost needs to be considered at least. Excellent, thanks, Sami. Uh, and the next question is: uh, since various kinds of parts to be coated. Uh, do you see the risk of risk contamination and how to manage it for parts coating operation? I'm sorry, I think I will need, need some clarification on this one. I'll... Uh, I will repeat the questions, I'm sure. The question is, since you're coating so many parts together, do you see a risk of cross-contamination and what are the guidance you know, in terms of for parts coating? Okay, good. So uh, we are coding usually uh, uh, one type of part at the time, uh, since we need to make uh, the the gas flow uh, kind of dynamics as as quick as possible to be less slow than 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 the ALD kind of would otherwise be. So it's it's really best to coat one type of part at the time. Uh, sometimes, uh, if there is an assembly that that it will always contain parts A, B, and C, so so always you will have those three parts uh, and the same number of, of of each part. So then it's of course possible also to build the fixturing so that it's optimized to have all these three parts coded at the same time. But uh, but it definitely requires uh, uh, kind of control of what what goes in, what goes out. And uh, uh, and uh, we don't uh, for this reason that that things need to be controlled. The batch setup is is kind of kind of controlled or fixed. There is no no issue of of cross contamination between between uh, different parts. Excellent. Thanks again, Sami. Um, I have a com a couple of questions here. One is. Uh, which materials uh, you work on for ALB coatings and 
does the thickness, the maximum thickness, depend on the material? Okay. Uh, well, some uh, materials were mentioned in the in the presentation: the aluminum oxide and yttrium oxide, uh, ones that that we we've been uh, kind of uh, scaling up to to production scale already. Uh, then there are a number of other materials. Uh, well, yttrium fluoride was was mentioned in the in the presentation, but but there are a number of other other materials that that we are looking into as well. Uh, some are many of them are just uh, simple oxide materials, but also some other other types of uh, materials and mixtures of oxides. Uh, that's that's. Uh, Kind of maybe the the the, the depth of of of, of details that uh, that I'm willing to share at this moment. Excellent, thanks, Ami. Uh, next question is: Do you have to use a carrier gas for precursor transportation to the chamber? Yes, we we need to use uh, the the nitrogen, the high purity nitrogen. It's uh, it's serving a, a, a couple of different purposes. One of them is is to to help the the precursor to 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 travel from the from the precursor source to to the reaction chamber. But the most important job that the inert gas is doing is is really that it's it's uh, it's purging the the reaction chamber between the different precursor pulses. So so that's the main purpose of the inert gas. Sure. Uh, Sam, I have a, a question here. Is um, applied materials has a patent on ALD and chamber parts? How do you, how does Benic differentiate? Uh, well, there generally on on this application area or any other application area, uh, there are maybe various different patents. So there may be a lot of IP IP out there. And uh, uh, this is, of course, something that everybody using this or whatever other technology is, is kind of plans to use or is using needs to take into account any any IP restrictions that there may or may not be. Uh, maybe that's the level of of comments uh, so far. Okay. Thanks again, Sammy. Um, the next question is um, I'm just saying, so does coating uniformity vary with the height of the of the shelves? For example, are central shelves more uniform than upper and lower ones? Uh, so generally the the coating uniformity is is uh, impacted by a number of uh, things and one important factor definitely is how to place the parts inside the, the chamber and yes it is important to to have kind of equal spacing as much as it is possible some parts are complex and, and make it kind of impossible to do that but uh, as much as possible uh, to have equal spacing around uh, the, the parts is it, it makes it uh, make the gas flows more uniform and and that helps the process. Thanks, Sammy. Next question is a simple one: Can you coat all plastic? Simple answer is yes, but the longer answer is is that uh, some materials yes, uh, some not. So so we we are more limited in the in the material selection because some of the ALD processes require. Uh, higher temperatures to be used, and uh, and uh, that would be then uh, more than the typical polymer materials can tolerate. So, uh, to some materials can be deposited with, on on polymers, and that's also something that is being done all the time. Thank you, Sami. A lot of very interesting questions, and um, other than alumina and yttria. Can you comment on what other type of coatings are useful, specifically with, you know, for metal contamination reduction? Uh, I think this is a topic that we are uh, very much willing to discuss uh, in in more detail in in uh, personal discussions, but uh, uh, not not publicly here, as this is kind of a sensitive uh, topic. 
Indeed. Uh, next question is, what is a strong point of compared to CBD? I think you addressed that in your presentation. So compared to CBD, uh, really the, uh, the C CBD uh, coatings uh, are, well, they can be uh, more conformal than, than the, the pure line of sight methods such as uh, PVD or, or plasma spray. Uh, so CVD coatings could be a little bit more uh, conformal, but still uh, nowhere near as as good in the conformality aspect as as the ALD coatings. As the CVD uh, doesn't really go through that kind of saturation. So so that's the biggest uh, difference uh, I would say. Then uh, then uh, uh, of course well, some other some other differences in the in the in the processing as well. But but uh, I don't see CVD coatings uh, uh, really used much for for this uh, this application area. Thank you, Sami. Uh, next question, quickly, is: Do you provide electrically conducting coatings? Uh, it's possible to deposit some uh, electrically conductive materials with ALD as well. It is uh, possible. Uh, it really depends on on what what kind of uh, uh, levels of conductivity are needed, uh, whether it's it's really kind of feasible or not, and uh, and some materials, uh, uh, yeah, also come with other like well, some some things can be kind of quite costly compared to other ways of depositing conductive materials, but but if there is really a need and, uh, that it needs to be conformal. There is that kind of need, then uh, it is it is possible. Thank you, Sam. The next one is basically combining and as on the PALB. Uh, as are, are there differences of covering using thermal ALB and PE ALB, and what are the PALB basic capabilities? Yeah. So the, uh, the so the plasma enhanced ALD. Uh, would would have uh, perhaps some advantages on 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 flat uh, substrates, uh, but but really the 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 issue is that uh, the plasma ALD would would not uh, be so scalable to large batch sizes, and and also uh, would would have more problems uh, with the conformality uh, requirements. So so the plasma basic that that all both of these limitations are due to that plasma has basically a limited lifetime so it cannot travel meters and and uh, and diffuse a uh, 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 kind of a uh, long way into into these these holes so so uh, for this application area we are not uh, not considering the use of, of plasma enhanced ALD process excellent and we have, we're really having some great questions here, and I'm glad we had some time to allow for that. Amazing. Uh, the next question is, coating of past exposed to corrosive gases uh, need to be refurbished after a while, or is it a permanent coating? Yes, so uh, any coatings will uh, will have some kind of lifetime. So normally, if they are really under under very corrosive or or otherwise harsh conditions, uh, they will have an, basically an edge rate, which uh, is as small as possible, but still existing. So eventually, the part will need to be uh, will need to be either coated again or replaced with a new new coated part. But the time that it takes uh, depends on on various factors, uh, and uh, and of course, one one thing that uh, you can if using ALD, then what you can try to optimize this is of course that how thick you make the coating thicker coating would last longer but but of course also costs more to make so it's a kind of balancing then uh, between that that kind of optimization task great thanks sammy uh, the next question is is it possible to grow up a taxi layer using the ALD technology uh, to what what which layer and the question again, apologies. Is is it possible to grow epitaxial layer using ALD? Epitaxial. Okay, so uh, epitaxial layers uh, are possible in some 
special cases, uh, but uh, but uh, generally uh, generally that doesn't happen. So so it's only only under some very very special uh, special cases that that uh, uh, the ALD kind of that the atomic layer epitaxy growth actually happens. So in this application area, I would say practically that it's not possible. Um, indeed, Sam, I think there's also next question is more on the cost related per, per layer or per, per technology. Uh, the benchmarking of the between you know ALD and anodization, plasma spray, etc. Uh, how does it compare, you know, uh, in terms of costs? Yeah, uh, ALD cost can be uh, can be kind of comparable uh, to let's say plasma spray coatings, for example. Uh, uh, it all depends on uh, on the, the on the kind of batch sizes that we that we are able to use and uh, and uh, the, the film thicknesses especially those are the the key parameters because the film film thickness will will affect two major components which are uh, how long it takes to deposit that there's a kind of pretty much linear correlation and uh, uh, so doubling thickness will cause you to use double time on the on the on the ALD tool and uh, and also will cause you to use double amount of precursor so it's 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 essentially kind of almost doubling the cost if you double the thickness so the uh, thick and and in, in thickness wise we i think that's that's one of the really key things uh, to optimize when when considering the cost and performance and uh, typically now we tend to be in the in the uh, micrometer range, so around one micron thickness uh, could be a little bit less or or sometimes more, but in that ballpark, whereas the the plasma spray and anodized coatings are are much thicker uh, in comparison. Uh, thanks, Sammy. Next question is: Are you doing development with tungsten or tantalum precursors? Uh, well, at Benek we are working with uh, definitely working with uh, with tungsten and tantalum precursors, uh, but uh, uh, for most of for other than this application, uh, so that let's say that these these are not the, maybe not the most important ones uh, that we consider for this this application area. Um, thanks. Uh, Sam, the next question is, what are the main pains caused by the involved vacuum valves and the ALD tool? Not sure if I understood the question. Uh, it's it's referencing to what are, the, what are the issues, if there are any, uh, with the vacuum valves and an ALD tool. All right, so I would imagine this. This uh, uh, so of course there, there are various types of valves. Uh, normally, what we would call vacuum valve that would be maybe on the on the pump line. Uh, uh, with the proper selection of of the valves there, uh, there is really no no issue. So of course there will be some some uh, deposition or particles uh, something uh, in in the ALD systems pump line. That's kind of usual. But uh, with the right selection of, of components, then they can last for a long time, not a problem. Other types of valves, of course, also being used in the in the precursor source side. So there are dosing, pulsing valves and, and such things. Uh, for those, there are also, also uh, working solutions. So, so there are uh, valves out there that, that, that can be used. We actually have some of our own own valve designs as, as well that we are using. Thank you, Sammy. So we have quite a lot of questions. So I propose that we we ask, we, we have time for one more last question. And please, uh, you know, we invite you. So again, um, 
Uh, to all attendees, to thank you very much for your participation. We invite you to join the Technology Unite Global Summit in a couple of weeks, uh, where Benek is as well as a gold sponsor, but is also an exhibitor. So you'll have a lot more opportunities to have one-to-one -one discussion with, with Sami and uh, other colleagues from, from Benek. Um, last question, if I may, Sami, is does handling cause harm to the layer? In case of stainless steel substrates, is there a way to preserve ALD layer during installation or maintenance? All right. So, uh, of course, it depends on the handling. So, so uh, uh, handling with with uh, with gloves is not a problem. Uh, but uh, but if there is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, hammering and such things involved, then of course that'll that'll be a problem for for the ALD coatings. But uh, uh, just like for any other coatings, so maybe uh, for those who are not very familiar with uh, with the ALD coatings, kind of in, in in practice, they are not that much different from that uh, uh, from the mechanical robustness and uh, and kind of tribological properties point of view. Not too much different compared to PVD coatings, for example, so so that uh, maybe that gives you an idea of what it what it uh, can tolerate. But uh, careful, normal careful handling uh, doesn't require any anything kind of out of the really out of the ordinary. But of course, uh, some some attention uh, that you, you when you well let's say that when you use such care that you would not scratch the part, that's something you anyway should avoid. If, there, if it was not coated, so you try to avoid scratching the part, uh, then uh, if you don't scratch the part, then the, you are not going to, to damage the, the ALD coating either. Maybe that's kind of the, uh, how it in practice can be considered. Fantastic. Um, again, I think one last remark is um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sami. Excellent presentation, excellent talk, really uh, promising technology. I think there's a lot of interest from the participants. We'd like to thank all for your time for participating. And as I mentioned, uh, we would like to invite you to the Global Technology and Global Summit. We'll have great more opportunities to, to speak one to one with, with Benek. Uh, and there was last question is the answer is yes, we will share all the pre recording of today's webinar uh, in the coming days. Um, and uh, thank you once again, Sami, uh, and thank you to all participants. Thank you very much. Thank you on my behalf as well. Stay safe. All the best.